please remain on the stage. You are the next speaker. <laughs> I'm sure most Singaporeans know Dr. Hang by now. Yeah. All right. I don't think he needs much of an introduction, but he is a man who has courageously come out and spoke for the other Singaporeans, Dr. Ang Yong Guan. a joy to see so many of you here. The crowd is getting bigger and bigger. And the sky is holding on, <laughs> waiting for that parade to start. <laughs> Fellow Singaporeans, thank you for coming here on this National Day occasion. Shall we all say Happy Birthday Singapore! Happy Birthday Singapore! Today as we celebrate our nation's 48th birthday, we can take pride in being Singaporeans. We have come a long way to take our place on the world stage. In terms of economic prosperity and infrastructure, we are the envy of the people in the world. We are also a safe place to live in. But without we people, such achievements will not be possible. Let us give ourselves a round of applause and a pat on our shoulder. But hardware and feeling safe does not make a great nation. A great nation is only great when its people feel good about themselves, gets along well with fellow citizens, supporting especially those weaker ones, and feels connected to the leaders and our country. But unfortunately, the connection is not there, at least for 40% of us. Something is missing. We, are we as a people emotionally insecure? Are we insecure? Yes. We have become emotionally dumbed. D-U-M-B-E-D. -E I mean emotionally dumb, not intellectually dumb. Emotionally dumb. And numb. And numb. According to a Gallup poll, 2012, Singaporeans are the least emotional people in the world. We are number eight most pessimistic people in the world. In other words, being emotionless and pessimistic can also make us vulnerable to mental problems. We are not only emotionally dumbed, numb, we are also down in the dumbs, but certainly not about that drums. <laughs> According to IMH survey 2012, one in 33 Singaporeans, that means quite a few here, have obsessive compulsive disorder. Keep on washing hands, keep on checking. I check once, the, my patient will check 10 times. I wash my hand two times, my patient will wash 20 times. Because they are emotionally insecure. 
our OCD rate is the highest in the world. Something I'm not proud of, <laughs> and you shouldn't be proud of. We are the OCD capital of the world. Life can be so stressful that some of us end up taking our own lives. 467 Singaporeans killed themselves last year. And that is the highest in 21 years. The highest in 21 years. SOS, Samaritan Association of Singapore, Samaritans of Singapore, receives 40,000 phone calls for help every year. Every day, 110 phone calls for help. Isn't this a paradox that this bleak state of affair is happening against a backdrop of so-called economic success? Singapore has one of the world's highest GDP per capita, low unemployment rate of 2%, and high life expectancy of 82 PM Lee, in his National Day message last night, said our economy is expected to increase, to grow by 2.5 to 3.5% by the end of this year. Such traditional economic indicators alone do not and cannot quantify our emotional well-being. While higher incomes may improve people's emotional well-being, but they can only do so up to a certain extent. Two famous economists, A. D. Chengen and A. D. Tun, they found that after you have earned $95,000 every year, that means $8,000 a month, Additional income will have very little meaningful effect on how you experience your life. In other words, after $8,000, more things must come in. Our quality of life cannot depend on money alone. It is clear that, our, that for our government to overemphasize economic growth, us an obsession with the building of our reserves at the expense of the citizens' emotional well-being, or to borrow Stephen Covey's emotional bank account, EBA, emotional bank account, or the economists will tell you social capital is no longer acceptable. You cannot have economic growth without looking into emotional well-being. We must do more to increase the emotional bank account of Singaporeans. Just as we insist on maintaining the minimum CPF account, we must insist on a healthy EBA, emotional bank account. A healthy EBA is vital for high self-esteem, which is the best antidote against pessimism and unhappiness. A high self-esteem person can cope very well with life, will not commit suicide, will succeed, will be innovative and creative for the Singapore economy. Building this EBA, I will call it EBA, Emotional Bank Account, depends on three interrelated factors. The self, the self, the stress you face, and the support you get from home, school, society, and your workplace, workplace and society. 
Parents need to spend more time with their children, especially the first five years before they go to kindergarten, for emotional bonding and depositing into the children's EBA, emotional bank account. But if the parents both have to work long hours and overtime to finance their high housing loan and to cope with the high cost of living, such emotional bonding, I'm afraid, is not taking place optimally. Once our children go to school, the school becomes another agency to build our children's EBA. If the school is supportive and provides a conducive environment for our children to do, learn and grow, they will continue to deposit into their EBA, Emotional Bank Account. If the schools are obsessed with academic results at the expense of personality development, then such healthy deposits into the EBA will not take place. Next, after our children finish schooling, they go to the workplace. If employers are supportive at work, supportive of work-life balance, they will continue to build their EBA. Finally, the nation plays a vital part in building our children and our EBA. Homes, schools, workplace operate within the nation, within Singapore. And they take their cues from our leaders who must have clear vision, passion, and the desire to help the citizen deposit into their EBA. PM Lee once yesterday said, last year he said the same thing. Singapore should always be our best home with heart and hope. H, H, H. But unfortunately, we see our houses, but we don't feel the home. We see the hate, the hate, but we don't feel the heart. And where there is hope, what we see is despair. Despair is no hope. Despair is no hope. What we see is despair. I feel strongly as a psychiatrist that we need a new narrative, a new mental model to make Singaporean less emotionally insecure, less dumb and less numb. But how to do it, Dr. Ang? Let me give you some ideas. In this new mental model, we want to build a quality society. Oh. <laughs> without sacrificing economic growth. Without sacrificing economic growth. In this new model, people will feel emotionally secure with a healthy EBA, Emotional Banking Account, to weather crisis and emotional storms. What policy do we need to examine or re-examine? Which one to fine-tune? And everyone, uh, too many. Uh. <laughs> and which one to change. i just give you a few examples because of lack of time. First, I feel we should not equate helping the disadvantaged, the poor and the elderly as turning Singapore into a welfare state. Do you know 
the word welfare is a horrible word, terrible word, taboo word to the PAP. They hear welfare, they shiver. They hear welfare, they shiver. They think we want to rob the bank. They think we want to rob the reserves. They think we all will queue up for the dough, queue up for the money. Come on, come on. The government's overemphasis on self-reliance has its limits. Cases like that of Rebecca Lowe, already mentioned by Vivian Pan, she threw her nine-year-old child, she had wanted to kill herself. An eyewitness saw her. She turned into, turned back, went into her room, brought her child to the fifth floor. She threw her child and now she's in jail waiting trial. Such cases should be identified early and not be allowed to slip through the safety net. When people know that easily available safety net exists, they will naturally be emotionally secure. The MBA will be full, full of positive deposits. That's right. Our healthcare costs are high and it's making people feel emotionally insecure. Professor Anand is still here. Anand Tambaya, Anand. We look into the healthcare system. The 3M system, MediSafe, MediShield, MediFund, only provide 50% of the total health cost. Your out-of-pocket expenditure is as high as 60%. Every time you have an operation, your 3M only account for 15%. Your out-of-pocket expenditure is 60%. The government needs to implement a universal health care insurance system. By risk pooling, we can lower the insurance premiums for every Singaporean. As a nation, we can then provide peace of mind and emotional security for all our citizens when they fall sick. Now, Raymond said, cannot fall sick. You fall sick, it's very expensive business. Now, this must be seen as an investment in our citizens' EBA. Do you know we're only spending less than 5% of our GDP on health? And it's among the lowest in the world. Second, review policies which make an individual feel his labored negatively. Okay, MOE has done a lot, removing ranking of schools, modifying streaming. I feel strongly they need to review and drop the term express and normal in secondary school. We know express is normal. Normal is abnormal. <laughs> Who are we kidding? We are mature enough to remove such euphemism. Now you may say, Dr. Ang, so many years already, why are you talking about such a small thing? Let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. Because Although it affects a small number of people, they feel labelled for life. The sensitive students feel they are normal only, normal technical, normal academic. They, and they carry this negative labour for the rest of their life. So don't underestimate the power of negative labelling on people. Even our former Prime Minister Lee Kuan Yew. Do you know when the press asked him many years ago, 
Why you didn't have casino when you were Prime Minister? Guess what Lee Kuan Yew said? Our former PM said, I am emotionally and psychologically against gambling because my father, he described, uh, he said, was a pathological gambler. Ah, Lee Kuan Yew may not be called a pathological gambler. That's why Bo Casino, Besayu Casino. Ah, his father, his father would come home, demand jewelry from his mother to pawn and to gamble. Now I better quote the page, huh? Page 34, volume 1. Is there, huh? Both your lia. You see what's wrong here, huh? I didn't say this, huh? At the time he was very young, he saw the father coming home and you and then they would have quarrel. And each one you use one word, violent quarrel. Violent means uh, violent quarrel. And he was 14 years old, he's the eldest in the family. And he also said, My father nearly killed me when I was four years old. He was also traumatized by his father. His father pulled him by his ear. Went to the well, nearly dropped him into the well. Page 25. Page 25. What does that mean? It means when we are labored, uh, we, when we have an event in our brain, we can be haunted for life. So, because of Lee Kuan Yew's father, we didn't have casino. But Lee Kuan Yew is not a gambler. His son proceeds to have casino. <laughs> Third, we have to do away with one size fit all mentality. Silver servants need guidelines, okay, but they must create exceptions to the guideline for deserving cases. For instance, there was a lady called Pamela Lim. Pamela Lim got five children, all IQ very high, but got developmental problem, Asperger syndrome, ADHD, IQ 160, but just cannot socialize. Went to MOE, MOE said, must go to special needs school. Because you got developmental problem. She took her children out of the school system, educated them at home, took them overseas. All five are now in university. And many of them entered as early as before 14 years old. A few days ago, I read in the Straits time, you cannot go to university in Singapore earlier than 18 or 21 because they say you are too immature. I love Singapore too old, but still can't. I love Singapore too old. I love Singapore too old. I love Singapore too old. One of Pamela's children study very simple, music and mathematics. Because she was so talented in music at 11, at 12, at 13. The university welcomed her with open arms. And she was also good in mathematics. Lucky, eh? In music alone, not enough. <laughs> she was good in both, okay? In music alone, you go to music school, okay? Fourth, remove policies that are unfair and illogical. PMD himself said last night, about play, about playing a bigger role to build a fair and just society. To create a fair and just society, please stop shifting the goalposts every now and then. The goalposts can be fine or to one. Don't keep on adjusting the electoral boundary. I get on Sirai, suddenly I come home. Welcome to Marine Parade. How 
do I feel? Yesterday, Gelam Sirat, today, Marine Parade. Where is my roots? How to feel emotionally secure? My EBA show minus withdrawal. Take from my EBA. Another child. Ah, very good. Homeless. Don't know where you belong. Emotional security comes from a sense of belonging to a place. That's right. That's why we are upset when there are too many foreigners. Because this is our place. Yeah. We grew up here. We yeah. born here. Yeah. Our grandparents came here. Yeah. One moment you are. Holland Bukit Timah, a Stephen Road resident. Uh. Next moment, some residents from Stephen Road woke up, become Tanjong Paga GRC, <laughs> and walk over, no need to move. One free public holiday. <laughs> you feel dislocated, and it will drain your EBA. Today, you learn nothing from me, I uh. learned three letters EBA. Emotional bank account as important as your CPF account. Un unjust, unfair, we must remove. Illogical policy, we must also make noise. Last general election, I pointed out uh, very ridiculous. No? People want to go home along CPE. Uh, the ERP is until 10.30 p.m. I say, are you discouraging people from going home early? You want people to make babies? You want to have family bonding? I make so much noise. Obviously, they overlook. The left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing. All the while! All the while, thank you very much. But we give them chance, we give them chance. Or too many changes. I'm very glad, uh, ladies and gentlemen. After GE2011, I keep on thinking 2016. How? Uh? <laughs> My EPA got <no> problem. <laughs> After GE2011, they changed to 8 p.m. 8 p.m. Number five. Constantly reassure Singaporeans the government embraces and really embraces diverse views stop creating a climate of fear by threatening lawsuits against citizens who chose not to be dumb by daring to speak up one of them leslie chu but you know what during that period i can tell you leslie's eba must have a lot of withdrawal Stop with negative, we need to negative. Okay, quoting from PM's speech again. All this is only possible if we are not divided by race, social class, and I like this last two words, political faction. Let us be mindful that when we Singaporeans speak up, it is not against the country. Because we love our country. Yeah. We are speaking up against the unfair policies of the ruling party. Yeah. Today, uh, the three letter I don't say because I want you to remember E B A. The three letter you know, uh, ta ta ta, I <laughs> don't say. <laughs> National Day, ma. Uh, we talk about nation, not about that party. Uh, that party, my Kong. <laughs> then, lastly, I talk about fertility rate. Are we doing enough to lower or to increase, to improve the total fertility rate? No! Piecemeal attempt. Half-hearted measure. That's right. Our former Lee Kuan Yew has already Give up, surrender, admitted defeat, admitted defeat. Post young, post young. Well, when I saw that, uh, my EBA very good. <laughs> because I thought he cannot make mistake, he cannot surrender. Well, when I saw him surrender, my EBA went up. I'm sure your EBA also went up. 
Then after all, after all, he can admit he made a mistake. He made a mistake. No, he didn't solve a problem. He didn't make a mistake. <laughs> he failed to solve a problem. He said he, he left it to his young colleagues to solve. He left in 1990. 23 years later, his younger successors all cannot come up with an answer. All cannot come up with an answer. And how much they are? Plenty of money. Cannot come up with an answer. But last night, PM Lee said something. We need immigrants to make up for our shortfall of babies. I was shocked when I saw babies. Shortfall of babies. Is he, like his father, also giving up on this topic? No more, no more, no more solution really. Rely on immigrants. Yes. If having a child is not about money, like what you say, everybody is saying, could, could one reason be the emotional insecurity many parents feel regarding bringing up a child in a highly competitive and stressful Singapore environment? It pays, therefore, to build the EBAs of Singaporeans' parents so that having a baby, seeing the child grow up in a secure environment and contributing to the child's EBA is a joy and not a chore. A joy and not a chore. A joy and not stressful. The child, because of his healthy EBA, will contribute more yes. and better to the nation. He can the and, <laughs> and from among them, we will have entrepreneurs, we will have innovators. Right. And for your information, Singapore's first Nobel Prize winner may come from them. Yeah. Because high EBA, very relaxed, yeah. not insecure. A lot of ideas. We may have our first Nobel Prize winner. Wow, now, uh, entrepreneur, bo, innovator, bo, uh, Nobel Prize winner, Tang Kuku. Uh. Because everybody is insecure, stressed, no time to innovate, no time to procreate. Procreate is zaykia. No time to zaykia. Only got time to work, work, work. Okay, happy birthday Singapore, Singaporeans relax, have fun, enjoy your holiday, remember to deposit into your EBA, thank you very much.